Very soon, gold and silver are going to outperform stocks as the dollar goes into its final death throes. The Fed is done hiking. There's no more hikes. We're headed down, right back down to zero. When there's another banking crisis, it's not going to be a smooth ride back down as they cut itsy bitsy little bit, 25 base points at a time, or even 50 base set points at a time. I believe, and yeah, I could be wrong. I can always be wrong, but I believe there's going to be a crisis and we're going to go from all the way where we are now to zero in one night and gold and silver are going to bust a cap or whatever the term is for just go nuts. That's also a term. But for now, my friends, keep the faith. We're almost there. Let's pull out the popcorn. I think it's going to happen in 2024. Historically, precious metals have not been correlated to stocks or bonds. That means that amid a market crash or a run on corporate bonds, the price of gold or silver has sometimes bucked the trend and remained robust. During certain past periods of market turmoil, gold and silver have outperformed stocks and bonds. Many investors, therefore, see metals as a hedge against falling markets, volatility, and inflation. Renowned financial analyst Rafi Farber predicts precious metals outperformance over stocks as the U.S. dollar declines, anticipating significant gains during a crisis-induced return to zero interest rates. In response to the expected rate cuts, the U.S. dollar has reached a four-month low, resulting in a considerable weekly drop in the dollar index. Gold and silver prices grow the most when the monetary conditions are easing. For example, in 2011, when the Fed's fund rates were really low, silver prices were at the highest, totaling almost $50 per ounce. Regarding the upcoming shift, Farber is optimistic, believing it could genuinely mark the start of a bull market for gold and silver. Gold and silver tend to move in the same direction, but silver has lagged behind gold over the past years. Gold's bull market began in 1999, and while the precious yellow metal did not move higher in a straight line, every correction has been a buying opportunity. Gold reached new record highs in 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, 2020, 2021, 2022, and 2023. However, silver has yet to surpass its 1980 peak of $50.36, coming close in 2011 at $49.52 per ounce. Farber noted a significant drop in LBMA silver holdings since the silver squeeze, suggesting a positive trend in depleting reserves. The quantity of silver held in LBMA vaults has declined for the last nine consecutive months. The August 2022 report states that the vaults now hold only 916.5 million ounces of silver, the lowest total since July 2016. Now we present the clips of Rafi Farber's insights from his recent interview with Arcadia Economics. Before we continue to delve into this discussion, please subscribe to our channel and activate the bell icon for timely updates. Uh, this is the gold to S&P 500 ratio. It means is gold outperforming or underperforming stocks? Uh, are you sad that you don't have the S&P and you went into silver? Well, yeah, I see since 2011 that would make you sad and it would make anyone sad that they have less dollars now because silver has underperformed the S&P 500 since the top uh, in 2011. But there are, is, there are imminent signs that this is about to reverse. There are signs that this is about to imminently reverse. And I'll show you these three circles that I could jiggered here on this chart. So this downtrend goes, I think, all the way back to 1980 when the, the ratio was at a peak. I don't know exactly what it was, but I know the Dow to gold ratio was one to one. So here, this, is, this was going down and down and down for about 20 years into 2000, which was the low. But... Uh, my point here is that the red line is always above the blue line, meaning the 200-week moving average is always above the 50-week moving average when the trend is falling and falling and falling. And here you had the meeting of the lines for very temporarily and then a continuation down into the bear market low of 1999-2000 uh, over here at the turn of the millennium, the fake turn of the millennium for the 2001 purists. Um, but anyway, on the way up, right, from 2000 to 2000 and uh, 11, you had one meeting of those lines over here in 2000, late 2005, early 2006. Uh, and then in during the bull market, when silver is outperforming stocks, uh, then you have the blue line on top of the red line, the 50-week moving average consistently on top of the 200-week moving average. And you had a crossover here showing a new bear market for sil for gold, sorry, gold versus stocks. It is not silver versus stocks, it's gold versus stocks, but it also applies to silver versus stocks, generally speaking. Uh, and then here, look, the same thing uh, that happened here, a tiny little cross or barely a cross here, 
and you had this cross of uh, of the blue over the red, which turned out to be a fake out, a bull trap in 2020. And I think it was made more extreme by the lockdowns and all the insanity that was going on there and the money printing. Um, but now it looks like we could have a more natural cross of the blue line on top of the red line, which would indicate a new bull phase, just like over here when we had this cross. They very, very rarely happen. Here, they've only happened like one, two, twice, twice in the last uh, 30 years, 33 years, whatever, 23 plus 10. Yeah, 33, 34 years, and probably longer than that if you, this chart is, is extended back. Very, very rare. It's about to happen again. Why? Because you have the 50-week moving average at 0.46, the 200-week moving average at 0.47, when this crosses and the blue goes above the red, uh, it could signal the real the real move into the bull market in gold and silver. This apparently was a fake out. It was a very frustrating one, but they don't happen very often. And I don't think this one is going to be a fake out. This is the LBMA chart from Gold Charts or Us. Uh, if you look at um, the LBMA website, it shows that I think they're at 845 million ounces, which translates to 26.28 26,284 tons. And if you look on um, on Gold Charts R Us, which is a great service by Nick Laird, I recommend it. He doesn't pay me to recommend his uh, his charts, but it's pretty good. So the SL, the ETFs in London own 13,731 13, tons. And that means that there's 12,553 tons left to uh, on the float. Uh, now, how much really is that? Well, considering that we've gone from uh, here's silver squeeze here. You see this little thing? Whoop, look at that. <laughs> February 2021. And suddenly they just had a bunch of silver in there. Well, is that kosher? I don't know. Probably not, but I'm not going to make any accusations here because who am I? Uh, we went to about like 39,000 tons to now 26,000 tons. So that's about 13,000 tons that were uh, erased from the LBMA since silver squeeze. And uh, there's 12,553 tons left on the float. So we've already drained uh, more than half of it uh, in the LBMA, which is much bigger than the COMEX. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we're going the right direction. And in the end game, this is all going to disappear very quickly. Rafi Farber stressed the importance of technical patterns, pointing out successful trend line tests in silver for potential upward movement. Silver prices could be headed for an explosive rise in 2024, if global supplies continue to fall short of demand and the Federal Reserve makes good on its plans to pivot to interest rate cuts in the coming months, according to metal markets analysts. Furthermore, he cautioned about silver market manipulation, suggesting SLV ETF moves as signals for turning points. The iShares Silver Trust SLV holds 441.47 million ounces of silver and has seen a year-to-date net asset value return of negative 0.3% as of Thursday. Let's get back to the interview. So we have here silver holds above the 200 week moving average and its triangle. This is just a quick technical update. Sometimes it really is as simple as holding a uh, technical formation. Sometimes it isn't, but sometimes you just really got to check the really simple technical patterns here. It might be what's happening. You see here uh, that gold, uh, sorry, silver tests uh, it's trend line that was established here in October uh, 2023, uh, and it tested this one, two, three, four. This is the fifth time, and right now we're also holding we're holding above. This is uh, from yesterday before the the big surge higher. I think we're about at twenty four dollars, twenty four dollars and something. Uh, so we're substantially higher than this now. So this has been successfully tested, and we're substantially above the two hundred week moving average in the triangle is maintained just barely over here but yes is still maintained and we should be heading higher from here i don't know how high we can go until the fed it really does turn around and print more money because we're still in a deflationary phase uh but if silver can react this strongly when the fed is still deflating the money supply imagine what happens when they start inflating it again it's going to go crazy this is a chart that i shared at the end game investor which is moving to substack check out endgameinvestor.substack.com. There's still some free material there and you'll like the essays that I've written. I think there's three up there and I will be uh, putting up a three times weekly market update there when I move in 2024. But anyway, this is a chart I shared at the Endgame Investor and look at these uh, little rounded rectangles here. So these blue bars are additions to the SLV holdings. 
Um, and I'm going to focus in on these in the next slides, but check this out. So you have a huge addition to the SLB holdings here and the blue bar. Uh, and that is just around the time where silver had an intermediate bottom over here. This blue line is the SLV is, uh, sorry, the silver price. And uh, no, it's the SLV price. The silver line is the silver price. They're, they obviously move in tandem. Uh, and then you have another time here where uh, SLV was at, uh, looks like a yearly low here. And you have another time here where silver is at another low here, and you had huge influx of uh, silver into the fund. Doesn't happen every time that lows coincide with big influxes of silver, but a lot of the times it does. You had one over here, uh, a little low here, and a big influx of silver into the fund, uh, into an intermediate high over here, and here, I, since I made this chart a uh, day before the big surge higher after the Fed's announcement that it, uh, the FOMC meeting where gold and silver went a little bit crazy and so did everything else, I put question marks here. Is this going to be an intermediate bottom for silver? And it turns out it looks like for now that it was. This is from a day later of the same chart, right? If we go back here, you see this is for December 12th and this is December 13th. So look what happened on December 13th, the day of the big silver move higher. So how much silver went into the fund? Zero. The big move higher was a day before. If we go back to the previous chart, the movements that are recorded on December 12th were actually made on December 11th. So let's assume there was a big move of 7.33 million ounces of silver into SLV on December 11th, reported on December 12th here. And then the big move in silver the next day on December 13th and no move in silver on December 12th. So uh, whoever was moving silver into the fund uh, was might have been anticipating a silver intermediate bottom yesterday. And how might that have happened? Well, I don't know for sure, but if someone is shorting the SLV or a participating bank, an authorized participant bank is shorting SLV to redeem those baskets into the futures market and sell in the futures market, marking an intermediate bottom and then covering a short as that bottom uh, is formed and then putting the silver back into SLV, that could be a little bit of footsie, a little bit of manipulation. It wouldn't be that extreme. I'm not that big on complaining about manipulation in the silver market. I know it happens. I don't deny it. I just try not to get too hung up on it because really, what can I do? And we're waiting for the end game anyway, which will not be able to be stopped by pitsy little manipulation. The point is, if this pattern is true and whoever is doing this to SLV is uh, manufacturing little moves down so that they can move in, then this could be a signal that whenever there's a big move up in the SLV fund, that uh, it could be signaling the bottom. It doesn't happen every time, so it's not a foolproof 100% indicator. But when there's big moves in the SLV ETF, big influxes of physical silver into the fund, uh, watch out for a turning point. Gold plays a crucial economic role as a medium of exchange during currency collapse. In 2023, with only a few weeks to go, Silver traded in the tightest range since 2019, when the differential between the high and low was $5.295 per ounce. 2023 has been a consolidation period for the silver market, with prices mainly remaining above $20 per ounce. Given the current market conditions, will the upward trend in precious metals continue, and how might they perform during global economic challenges? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. If you find this video informative, don't forget to support our channel and turn on notifications to stay informed about our latest videos. See you in the next video.